All eyes were on Baton Rouge as Jaden Daniels and his LSU Tigers had their pro day on Wednesday. And please believe the Raiders were up close to personal for all of it. That plus a whole lot more comes up on Thursday's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast for March 28th, 2024. Just win. Just win. Just win. Just win. You ought to win as a Raider. Pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. And won. And won. And won. And won. Welcome here, Raider Nation, to another edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen of the day. Make sure you subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. To get the latest edition of the show as soon as it becomes available, as always, if you're checking us out on YouTube, we appreciate it in a major way. The show continues to grow. Over 13,000 subscriptions. That's awesome. That's because of you, Raider Nation, of course, because of my man, Ari. Ari does a fantastic job each and every day getting us up on YouTube, making sure we're looking good and sounding good. So shout him out on Twitter, at Ari Produces. You can hit me up as well, at your boy Q254. And you know we got the Locked On Raider Podcast voicemail line. 707-654-4693. We'll get your calls and texts coming up in segment number three as we do pretty much each and every day. A lot of good feedback. We'll get it coming up again in segment number three. Segment number two, I had an opportunity on Wednesday to be on a former NFL GM Mike Tannenbaum's uh, little pre-draft conference call that he had for ESPN. Really good stuff. Uh, so there's a lot of sound bites that I got from that. So you'll hear a few of them all quarterback related coming up in segment number two. Segment number one, just kind of news and notes of the day. And please believe it's all going to be focused around Jaden Daniels and LSU's Pro Day on Wednesday. We'll get right into that after I tell you about the title sponsor of today's show, which is FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started today. I'll tell you a lot more about them later on in the show. But Wednesday was a big day when it comes to pro days. And on my radio show, Unnecessary Roughness, Radio Nation Radio 920, I've been doing a really good tour as far as I'm concerned of pro days uh, around college football, just kind of seeing where Antonio Pierce and the Raiders are popping up and who they're looking at and who they're focusing on. And, of course, when it came up to LSU, you knew Jaden Daniels. You knew Antonio Pierce was going to be present, right, coming off the owners' meeting in Orlando, uh, the Raiders made a beeline to Baton Rouge, and when they were there bright and early on Wednesday to check out Jaden Daniels and his LSU Tiger teammates. As a matter of fact, uh, Antonio Pierce, offensive coordinator Luke Getze, quarterback coach Rich uh, Scandarello, and assistant GM Champ Kelly were all present for what Jaden Daniels had going on. As a matter of fact, Cameron Wolf from NFL Network was a guest on my radio show on Wednesday, and NFL Network had the pro day, and they have all these pro days covered like a glove. They do a fantastic job leading up to the draft, so uh, definitely a go-to one-stop shop for me. But Cameron Wolf was a guest on my radio show, and I asked him about Jaden Daniels' uh, pro day, what he thought about it. Uh, here's what he had to say and a couple other follow-ups as well. Check it out. Cameron Wolf from the NFL Network talking about the LSU pro day. Yo, all 32 teams had a rep there. You had six teams with head coaches and GMs there. So the Raiders were pretty deep there. Antonio Pierce, and uh, he, he was there. And uh, you, you look at some of the other staff, they had their D-line coach, Rob Leonard, there working out some of the tackles. Uh, Champ Kelly was there. They had a pretty deep, deep group there. And obviously it's been well documented, the relationship Antonio Pierce and Jaden Daniels have had, you know, since, since he was a kid. So um, I think it's no secret that if there's any way – for the Raiders to get up there, then they would have interest in Jaden. But uh, from what it sounds like, Jaden's not going to be in that green room very long. You know, he's, he's right now projected to be a top three pick, and you know, he's got meetings set up uh, for the Commanders, the Patriots, the Raiders are one of those teams as well. And so, you know, he's going to have to get past the Washington team uh, before there's any hope uh, for, for the Raiders or anyone to try to get him. NFL Network's Cameron Wolf is with us here on Raider Nation Radio 920. Unnecessary roughness. As far as the drills that you saw uh, Jaden go through, obviously he didn't do any drills outside of throwing the ball. What did, what did you see uh, just from his arm talent today? Yeah, I think he really wanted to show that he could stay inside the pocket and throwing off platform uh, on all levels. And I thought he did that pretty impressively. Like, we all know what he is as a dual threat. You know, he won the Heisman. He, he, he's an incredible rusher. But I think he wants to prove the team. Uh, that he can be excellent inside the pocket. And so uh, he was pretty fluid. Um, he missed a couple of deep throws, but otherwise he was very accurate. And, uh, you know, NFL teams were impressed. I talked to a coach and said he had a very, very good workout. And you can kind of see his energy as he's moving around from throw to throw and hyping up his 
teammates. And so he, he looked like a guy that's ready to, to contribute year one. A lot of times you have these rookie quarterbacks and you, you debate their readiness. Like Drake May is a guy talking to personnel of like, he's, he's pretty raw. He may not be ready to be a, a top quarterback in year one or even year two. Jaden seems like he's ready. You know, he can be a contributor, a top contributor early on. And you saw that today in the spring. So that was Cameron Wolf while he was on my radio show on, uh, on Wednesday talking about the LSU Pro Day. And this is why he was on his way. He was leaving LSU. He was on his way to Mississippi to his grandparents' house. Well, he referenced in that interview that I had with him, probably a good 14, 15-minute conversation, that he had an opportunity to sit down with Jaden Daniels following his performance. And I saw that later on on NFL Network as well as they kind of replayed it. So I was able to check it out. But uh, here's Jaden Daniels sitting down one-on-one, just a couple minutes of the conversation with Cameron Wolf, and just starts off with Jaden Daniels just talking about how he thought he performed at the pro day. Yeah, I felt like I did. There's a couple throws I wanted back. Mm-hmm. I know I can make, uh, you know, consistently. But, you know, that's just that's football. It's life. Uh, I mean, you're going to miss some things. You're going to have mistakes. But it's all about how you bounce back. And I feel like after I miss a throw, you know, I bounce back the next throw. Um, a couple throws after that. I know you were intentionally working on this workout. I was told you were here working until midnight, prepping your footwork, getting ready for this. Yeah. And, and now the focus is going to be where do you go, yeah. right? You've shown what you do. Is there a, a landing spot or a place that you would say, hey, I, I would love to be there? I mean, it's really just who wants to invest in me, you know. Um, somebody that wants to go out there and say, you know, this is our guy. We're going to do whatever, whatever it takes to make him successful on and off the field. So, um, you know, that's, that's something that uh, teams got to figure out, something I got to figure out um, and, and go from there, you know. And then whoever drives me, you know, is going to get a hard worker. So, uh, you know, I'm ready. Absolutely. What makes you the best quarterback in this trap? Um, I'll just say my versatility. Um, you know, explosive plays are, are a name of the game of football. You know, defenses try to limit explosive plays, explosive players. So, um, you know, just what my resume speaks for itself, what I, what I do in that category. Um, either that's with my arm or my legs. Absolutely. I know your former head coach, Antonio Pierce, is here. Yeah. I chatted with him a few minutes ago. And I asked him, what what does he think about you? Like, what, what are the traits that stand out? And he told me calm, leadership, and extremely high football intelligence. What does that mean? It means a lot. I mean, um, that's just who I am as a person. You know, I take the the, the game serious. You know, I want to learn. Um, obviously, going out there and playing football, um, you got to have a good IQ. If not, you're not going to be successful in this league. So, uh, it means a lot of people and you know, NFL personnel and obviously from, from AP that have been knowing me since, you know, I was a kid. You know, it just means a lot. I know they're a little low in the draft, you know, <laughs> but what what would it mean if they, they got up there and made a move to try to reunite you with AP? Man, it'd be crazy. Um, that's just something that, that got to happen. It's something I, I can't control, so it's out of my control, so I, I don't stress on stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, that, that would be crazy if, if that happened. So there you heard, uh, you know, Cameron Wolf and Jaden Daniels talking about the pro day. You heard Cameron ask him about Antonio Pierce, what he had to say, uh, what the traits that stood out to him about Jaden Daniels and what it would mean if the Raiders were to find a way to get up, trade up from 13 to around two to be able to get Jaden Daniels and make him part of the Raiders uh, organization. Now, of course, he's going to say everything that he needs to say as far as, well, that'd be nice, but it's out of his control. And he's right. It is. There's a great chance that Washington takes him. There's a great chance that uh, the Raiders had never have an opportunity to get to him. But we do know that AP is very much into Jaden Daniels, uh, wants him to be the quarterback, and is probably going to exhaust every effort to try to go get him. So what is that effort going to take? Well, as I mentioned, I was on the the media, the little uh, pre-draft conference call with Mike Tannenbaum, and I asked him that exact question about going from 13 to 2 to go get Jaden Daniels. You hear my question and Mike T's answer uh, from that media conference call on Wednesday. Check it out. Mike T, thanks for doing this for us, my man. Uh, you with your GM hat on, if you're going from 13 and you're trying to get to number 2 like the Raiders, I believe, are trying to do to land Jaden Daniels, what would you give as far as the farm to try to get up there? Yeah, I think, to be candid, uh, I think that's going to be really hard to do. Uh, you know, you got Minnesota with the two ones there. I, like, the way to do that, to be candid, I made some trades like this, is basically what you have to say is, like, first of all, you got to hope that Washington wants to trade out or, you know, in your scenario, let's say Washington takes straight May, New England Strat, you just can't get them off the phone because you don't have as much ammo as a team like Minnesota. And basically you're saying, hey, we're not negotiating here. We're paying the bill. Tell me what the bill is. And that's going to be, you know, three first round picks, which is, you know, you could do three, you could trade three years in advance. So it would be three number ones. And then, you know, they may look at the roster and say, Hey, we want another really good young player. Um, 
and 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 really go from there. And you know, candidly, like who would that be? Like it may be Devontae Adams, it may, it may not be. So, but if I'm the Raiders and I want to go all the way up, it's going to take at least three first round picks, especially competing against Minnesota this year. So, I mean, again, three three ones. And that's that's cool. I have no problem with that. I like how Mike T just said, hey, you know, the Raiders don't have the same kind of, uh, you know, ammunition to get up to number two like the Minnesota Vikings do. So if you can get Washington on the phone, just don't get off. I like his approach. Don't ask what, hey, this is what I, or don't offer a trade. This is what we're willing to give like I did when I was trying to negotiate with Washington. Just say, hey, what's the price? And I'm willing to pay it. If that's your guy and you're willing to go do whatever it takes to get him. Hey, what's the price? Call their bluff. What's the price? What's it going to take to get you off that number two spot? Okay, it's what it's going to take. Done. Let's 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 sign, seal it, and deliver it. That's basically what Mike T is saying. The Raiders have to do, even though as he you heard him say, sounds like a very big long shot for it to happen. So I thought that that was some really good stuff, all focused around Jaden Daniels and uh, his pro day on Wednesday. And there's a lot of reports out there. Oh, he had a bad pro day. No, he didn't. Everyone that I talked to, and I talked to multiple guys that were at the pro day, not guys that were sitting in their mom's basement on Twitter and, you know, trying to just go ahead and put stuff out there. Uh, and, and believe me, there's plenty of that stuff out there. Guys that were there were like, no, he was he was great, right? I mean, he missed a couple throws here and there, and you heard him say he missed a couple throws here and there, uh, but he was fine. He was fantastic. He had a heck of an arm. Uh, he showed that throughout the course of the season. Obviously, he can use his legs and was really trying to focus on just using his arm uh, at the pro day just to show it off a little bit more than already need be. But uh, the biggest thing and the only knock I really have on Jaden Daniels is the fact that he took a lot of hits at LSU, and he can't take those kind of hits because that will get you hit right out the league. But that's all I got as far as Jaden Daniels, the only knock I have on him. Would love to see him suiting up in the silver and black. Today, a couple of pro days just to continue to monitor North Carolina, Drake May, he'll be in action. And then Washington, their pro day is today as well. Uh, so Michael Penix will be on display. Roma Dunze, the wide receiver, he's not going to uh, do any kind of drills. He's basically resting on what he did at the combine, which is fine, but it's all about the quarterbacks. Drake May and Michael Penix for North Carolina and Washington. It'll be interesting to see who's representing for the Raiders at Washington's Michael Penix Day, because uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that. And then, of course, North Carolina with Drake May as well. But that's what I got for you for segment number one of today's Locked On Raiders podcast, kind of news and notes just going over pro days, uh, talking to LSU, talking North Carolina, and talking Washington. Coming up in segment number two, you heard a little bit from Mike T uh, when I was asking him about what it would take for the Raiders to get from 13 to 2. Let's deep dive on some of these quarterbacks from Drake May to Jaden Daniels to JJ McCarthy and others. We'll do that in segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Before we get to that, though, I do want to tell you about Game Time. You shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event, right? Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets to sporting events, music, comedy, theater, whatever the case may be, they got you. They got great last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. So you got those uh, last-minute seats. You want to even get seats after the show has started? You can do that. They even have them up to an hour after it starts. It's the place to find all the last-minute seats. They, you can get those explicit, exclusive flash deals, sponsor deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, and concerts, and you can even see your seats before you actually buy them so you know what to expect when you arrive. No surprise. Surprise, surprise. No, that won't happen as long as you got game time. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the app, create an account, use promo code locked on for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create that account, use the promo code locked on, L O C K E D O N, for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, Raider Nation, there we go. Segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. I want you to hear from Mike Tannenbaum. I was part of that pre-draft conference call, uh, courtesy of ESPN on Wednesday. Really good stuff. Good about 45 minutes to almost an hour long. Just Mike T talking philosophies from a GM point of view. Always do these with, uh, you know, these drafty uh, analysts and these gurus, you know, the Daniel Jeremiah's, the Mel Kuyper Jr.'s, the Matt Miller's, you know, guys like that. But to have an opportunity uh, to hear uh, from a former GM, I think that is really cool, and I get it. A former GM means that he got fired at some point. He did, but he still has the understanding and the know-how uh, that goes on behind the scenes uh, if you're a GM guy going down to the draft season. So I think that's really good, uh, valuable knowledge to hear. So the first one I want you to hear, first sound bite is Mike Tannenbaum talking about philosophies and traits that he picked up uh, while he was coming up as a scout and obviously a GM when evaluating quarterbacks. What is he looking for? Here's Mike Tannenbaum on that. You know, a lot of it comes like from Coach Barcells, and he would talk about like, Every time, like, you start 10 or more games, like, that becomes, like, sort of, like, you should see material bumps. You know, we always used to hold it against a player, like, if they transfer. I mean, it just seemed like five years ago, like, 
it seems like a lifetime ago. Um, and Mark, by the way, interestingly enough, that was the one box he didn't check. He didn't have a lot of starts at USC when we traded up for him. You know, the measurables were there, sort of like what we were looking for intangible wise were there. Everything was there except his game started. And he had a very unusual career in that he won four road playoff games in his first two years and then actually played worse. So I think now, you know, one of the interesting things is going to be with the transfer portal. I think what's really important now is to test the mental toughness of any prospect, but obviously more notably with the quarterback. Like, how do they handle adversity? Um, because we're seeing guys transfer. And that that is something I know a lot of people in the league are really struggling with, which is, you know, when you get to the NFL, it's all about, you know, development and overcoming mental toughness. I mean, having mental toughness to overcome those, you know, bumps in the road. And, you know, there's just so many examples of it takes guys a while. Like, you know, Patrick Mahomes sat his rookie year except for the last game. Um, and I'm really hard-pressed to understand why we put so many of these first-round picks out immediately, you know, for all the wrong reasons. You hate to see anybody get hurt, but, you know, Anthony Richardson sitting last year I think was a good thing. The, the inverse of that is, like, I'm hard-pressed to understand, like, putting Bryce Young out there from day one, like, how did he get better, like, in that situation? So um, not sure if that totally answers your question, but I think teams use a combination of the data, the objective data, and then you, you, it's projection. And, you know, there is a subjective aspect of it. I thought Matt Eberflus's answer the other day was really interesting and insightful when he talked about assessing Caleb Williams at dinner with his teammates. That's something I would be paying, you know, a lot of attention to. And then, you know, the other thing that I, I'm a big believer in is, you know, who you are in life is how you treat people that can't help you. So spending a lot of time on campus with the support system around players, like academic supports, equipment, um, trainers, the, the, like the way the, the, the prospects interact with those people is who they really are. Deep dive right there on philosophies and traits. And, you know, I love what he's talking about when it comes to, you know, treating people the way, uh, you know, the, you, you learn a lot about someone who, the way that they treat someone who can't do anything for them. Like, I, I think that that's really cool. That's a really good life lesson. Uh, and that's something that these GMs look at with certain players, right? And it might not be every player, but quarterbacks, you need to know a lot about them. So I uh, love what he said right there. Again, a very detailed answer. Uh, you hear he's talking about Bill Parsons. So obviously that goes really far back. And of course, that's evolved over the time, but uh, just kind of letting you know where his roots were. So uh, the next soundbite that I want you to hear is me asking about Michael Penix, because it looks like there's a reality, you know, that the Raiders could be in line for Michael Penix, where Jaden Daniels look like he might be, you know, a little bit out of reach because it's so hard to get up to that number two spot. So maybe they have to go for Michael Penix. And, you know, if you listen to Wednesday's show, you heard TJ Hushmanzada saying, hey, if you can't get Jaden Daniels, go get Michael Penix. Again, Michael Penix has his pro day today at uh, the University of Washington. So hopefully we'll have some good feedback from that. But uh, I asked Mike I asked, uh, Mike T about Michael Penix and also uh, about the right, right tackle spot because the Raiders need a right tackle to protect the blind side of Michael Penix if they were to get him. So here's Mike T talking Penix and right tackles. Mike, you have uh, Michael Penix going number 19 to the Rams given his uh, injury history how much consideration did you think about that while while evaluating him and and with that being said are there some right tackles true right tackles in this draft that you're looking at uh, to protect a guy like Penix and his blind side yeah no that's a great question so look you know with Penix um the last couple of years have been good right it's just when you're running a team you have to assess risk and you know that's where like to be Quarterback availability is so important. 66 different quarterbacks started a year ago. And again, we could go ask the teams like Cincinnati, like Minnesota, like the New York Jets, what it's like. Um, he, he, I was just watching him this morning. Like he made a throw against Texas that maybe five people on the planet can make, including, you know, pro football. So he has incredible ability. Obviously he has great perseverance. Those are really important traits. So I'm, I'm rooting for him and he's very talented. You know, as we talked about Latham, Mims, like there's some guys, they'll, they'll be fine on the right side. At least Fuaga, you know, I think Fautau from uh, Washington probably goes inside early on. I don't know if he has the feet of those other guys, but there's plenty of guys that could play on the right side that could pre definitely you know protect his backside. Again, something that the Raiders need to address, that right tackle spot. We've been talking about offensive line really off, all offseason. That is something that they need to do. They need to address uh, the left side to the center is good. Uh, the right side is questions. 
right? Of course, they've got Dalton Wagner coming back. Uh, they've got Thayer Mumford. He's supposed to be competing for the right tackle spot or right guard. Uh, they've got DJ Fluker, but it's a lot of questions. It's not a lot of, oh, this is a, a answer. So they need to be able to find their guys. And the one good thing, thing I feel pretty confident about is Tom Telesco is really good at the trenches. I said it on my radio show on Wednesday. His name should be uh, Tom Trenches Telesco because <laughs> he always focuses in on the uh, trenches. But I uh, thought that was a pretty good answer right there from Mike T, just talking about Michael Penix and what he could bring to the table. Uh, also, how about J.J. McCarthy? He's a guy that a lot of folks talk about is climbing up the draft boards. But really, as I discovered at the Combine, it's not really climbing up the draft boards. It's, well, we're just now starting to talk about him and something that the NFL evaluators already know. So here's Mike T responding to a question about J.J. climbing the board and you know just now getting noticed. And then also, uh, he had mocked the the Cardinals to to draft JJ McCarthy and trade Kyler Murray to the Minnesota Vikings. So he answers why he did that as well in the same answer. So here's uh, Mike Tannenbaum talking all things JJ McCarthy and why number four to the Arizona Cardinals. You know, a couple of things. Look, I'm very fortunate. I've been to at least a half a dozen of their practices over the last couple of years, a lot of their games. And I like for me, um, I've been talking about him for months. So this whole idea that he's rising, that that has not been the case with me. Um, I think he's been there. When you look at a quarterback, he's 6'2", 219. He started 28 games, won 27 of them, 49 career touchdowns, almost 1,000 yards rushing. And you go back a couple of years ago, they're playing Illinois at home. It was really, really cold. Illinois had a really good defense that year. And he made the plays in the fourth quarter between a run, there was a PI, began to make a little field goal range. You know, Alabama brought the team back one time after another. So – in those high leverage moments, he played well. And then when you run like the searches and true media, third se- third and seven or longer this year, he has the best QBR of any quarterback. So I'm really hard pressed to understand like what, what he doesn't have. He's a great person. He's a great leader. Um, I think he's a way better quarterback right now than Daniel Jones. And in terms of my comparison with Kyle Murray, I, I love Kyle Murray. I think he's a really good player. My point was J.J. McCarthy is six years younger, and over the next two years on an average-per-year basis, he'll make $27 million less per year than Kyle Murray. So putting my GM hat on, I'd rather have J.J. McCarthy and you know fill in the blank, Christian Wilkins or some other A player, um, and Kyle Murray's missed games. He hasn't played a full season since 2020. So for me, if I'm Arizona, I, 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 I just take J.J. McCarthy. Like I don't overcomplicate it. I think these rookie deals are transcendent. And uh, to me, again, that it's a fairly easy decision. So, again, he's been very high on J.J. for a long time. And, you know, it's funny. People ask me all the time about J.J., and and I keep saying the same thing. Uh, He has winning traits. He has mobility. Uh, Obviously, he's a winner. Right. I mean, that's that's great. Um, You know, but the thing is, it's like you just don't know what you don't know. And it's hard to just, you know, put your finger on and say, yeah, that's that's the guy that you want when you don't know what he can't do. Can he carry the team if need be? I think that's probably the biggest question. But at the end of the day, you know, as long as he's doing the right thing and he's he's playing at a high level, maybe you don't need him to be that guy, that superhero. But, you know, you look around, especially the AFC, and you see these dynamic quarterbacks, these guys that can go get it done, the Josh Allens, the Lamars, the Tuas, the, you know, the uh, Joe Burrows, uh, Justin Herberts, even though he hasn't done it quite yet. Uh, of course, Patrick Mahomes. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of guys that can be superheroes. So you would think that you at some point – need a superhero well, final soundbite from uh, Mike Tannenbaum his little pre-draft conference call that he had on Wednesday uh, by way of ESPN is about Drake May the guy who also has a pro day today North Carolina and Washington both have their pro day today uh, talks about Drake May what he thinks about him and also shares a slight concern that he has when it comes to Jaden Daniels here's uh, Mike Tannenbaum I really like him I, I had a visit to North Carolina um, I think he reminds me of Justin Herbert look there's some games like Virginia I wish he had played better um, but for his size and his foot quickness and uh, speed, I think it's just a, a rare combination. I love Jaden Daniels. Um, the only thing about Jaden Daniels that concerns me is like when you look at his frame, he's a, a narrow waisted guy. Like Jalen Hurts is really big from the waist down. And you can see like Jalen's like been built to last, even though he was hurt last year. Like, I worry about Jaden Daniels' frame um, and some of the hits he took. Like we talked about Will Levis. Will Levis took some big hits last year. And if that doesn't change, he's not playing 17 games. 
And same thing with Jaden Daniels. Like he's going to have to change the way he plays 20, 25% of the time to avoid some of those big hits. And then the second one is when you look at the keys to building a roster around a rookie quarterback, what are they? And do you see Washington having done that this off season? Yeah, I think they've been really, it's been fun to watch Adam Peters and Dan Quinn. Like they, they've, you know, they brought in a lot of culture setters. I, I think they've been really fun to, to watch. And, um, you know, like Tyler B is, if that's how you say his name, like is to me, I, I think like getting a setter is like a great, like we did that a couple of times in my career and that makes a big difference. And, you know, Bobby Wagner, for example, I thought was a big signing. And I think you get the quarterback when you get the quarterback, that's the most important thing. Um, and then you figure out what else you have to get. But I don't think you wait when you can get a quarterback that you can get this year. You got to take him. So there is Mike T right there talking about Drake May, that he likes him, likes him a lot. He's just not a guy that a lot of people are talking about right now. And that might change with his pro day being today. Uh, you know that it kind of ebbs and flows when it comes to the draft season. Right. I mean, guys start peaking at the right time and then they stop peaking. Right. So who knows? Maybe, uh, you know, J.J. McCarthy and Jaden Daniels are peaking too, too soon. And by the time April 25th comes around, their, their names are starting to cool off a little bit. And maybe a guy like Drake May, maybe he just really goes out and has a phenomenal uh, pro day today and really starts. Uh, you hear start hearing his name more times than not. But again, that's kind of how the draft season goes. You also heard his one concern about Jaden Daniels, just his size, because he did take those monster hits. Something I referenced earlier in segment number one. But that's all I got for you for segment number two. A little sound bites from Mike T uh, on that little pre-draft conference call that I thought was good, almost an hour long, hour strong uh, when it came to all things draft from a GM's point of view. Coming up in segment number three, what's on your mind? Your calls and text draft that Lockdown Raider podcast. Voicemail line 707-654-4693. Before we get to that, though, I do want to tell you about the title sponsor of the show, which is FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. And, of course, it gets back in action today. Excited about that. Sweet 16 action. This should be a fun weekend. It doesn't matter if you're betting on big upsets or one seed. It's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines, whatever the case may be. You can pick on who's going to you can pick who's going to win it all. Or, you know, you can see who's going to make uh, the deeper run. It's all up to you. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Here we go, Raider Nation. Segment number three of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Your calls and texts draft that Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line, 707-654-4693. Let's start things off with a call from Raider Mac and the OC. He's calling to talk about that picture of Jaden Daniels' elbow that's floating around social media that looks just a little awkward. Here he is, Raider Mac and the OC. What's up, Cube? This is Raider Mac calling from Orange County. Wanted to call in to see if you've seen the photos of Jaden Daniels' elbow that's been uh, floating around here. I just saw it today, this afternoon, and I think we've got our blessing in disguise here. Teams are going to see that, might might freak, a little, freak them out a little bit, make them a little nervous with those medicals, and maybe, and this is a pretty big maybe, I get it, maybe he falls out of that top five, top seven-ish type of picks, and that's where it's more realistic for the Raiders to trade up and uh, scoop up Jaden Daniels. Haven't heard anything negative about the medical history, but stuff like this, these little things, I mean, maybe we get that Michael Orr situation from him too and have him drop even further. I don't know. But I uh, wanted to put on your radar to see your thoughts, man. You think it's a big deal? You think it's not a big deal? You think teams are going to get a little bit more nervous about taking them top three? Want to hear your thoughts, Q. Raider Mac out. Thanks so much, Raider Mac, for the call. Appreciate you, my man. And, yeah, that was a, a picture or, you know, looks like a, a picture. I saw it on Twitter as well uh, sometime throughout the course of the season. Dr. Jesse Morris on Twitter said, Jaden Daniels appears to be dealing with bursitis of his right throwing elbow. This is the inflammation of the bursa sac uh, that is usually empty and is, is, there, is there to protect the bone underneath. We have them in several joints, including the elbow and the knee. Banging your elbow against a hard surface often results in inflammation of the bursa, causing the body to fill it with fluid. It's a protective mechanism to prevent fracturing the bone underneath. Uh, these are very common and more annoying than concerning, as long as they're not infected. These can be drained with a needle, but often they'll fill back up. I've had a good success with injecting plasma from the blood to make these go away permanently. For some people, they are stubborn. These are quite an eyesore and look really funny, as you can see with Jaden Daniels. They usually do not have a negative impact on the player or person. They should not impact his ability to throw or cause any pain. Literally, just a visual oddity. So that's just, you know, from a doctor, Dr. Jesse Morse on Twitter. 
Uh, doesn't mean that he's 100% correct, but uh, I saw a lot of people freaking out about his elbow. What in the world is going on with his elbow? Uh, it, it sounds like it's a whole lot of nothing, uh, just a protective mechanism that's going on. Uh, the good thing is that was during the regular season. He's been to the combine. He's gone through the medicals. He's done all that good stuff. He's got a good, clean bill of health. So there's nothing really to be concerned about when it comes to that. But thanks so much for the call. I do appreciate you. Up next, got a text from Means the Raider. Hey, Q, Means the Raider here. First time texting into the show. What do you think about Marvin Lewis? What do you think he'll bring to our defense? And you think our offense will be improved enough to keep up with the Chiefs next season? That means the Raider. Thanks for the text. I appreciate you. And, well, if you listen to Wednesday's show, uh, TJ Hushmanzada, who played for Marvin Lewis, thinks that he's going to bring a lot to the table. And, you know, once – uh, once Antonio Pierce took over as the head coach and Marvin Lewis started hanging around the Raiders, you saw that defense ramp up even more. And he's a defensive-minded head coach, right? And so him being an assistant head coach to Antonio Pierce, I think that's a good thing. That's only going to bring another philosophy to the defense. I really appreciate the fact that TJ brought up how he cleaned up the Bengals as an organization off the field before he even had to do any of the heavy lifting on the field. And I think that's a big deal, especially knowing that Antonio Pierce is trying to change the culture. And as far as the offense goes, I think that the Raiders offense can hang with the Chiefs if they have a dynamic quarterback. <laughs> I mean, you know, like, let's just let's keep it a buck, right? I think that your average quarterback is going to get your average quarterback play and get your average offense. I think a good quarterback is going to get you good quarterback play and a good offense. I think a dynamic quarterback is going to get you dynamic quarterback play and a dynamic offense. I, I really honestly think it's that simple. And that's why I'm pounding the table for the Raiders to do everything they can to go get their guy in Jaden Daniels. And if you can't get him, Michael Penix might be your next best option, and he can open up the offense as well with the, his, his throwing ability. Got to make sure you protect him and have that strong run game, but he's got darts. So if they get the right quarterback, yeah, the offense could be fantastic, and that's what it needs to be, right? I mean, the Chiefs got it done all season long with defense. We know that. But when push came to shove and they were in the Super Bowl and they needed a big play, that bloodthirsty pirate that name is uh, Patrick Mahomes went out there and made it happen. I'm not saying you're going to go get a Patrick Mahomes because there's only one of that dude. Well, actually, it's two because he's Patrick Mahomes the second. His dad is Pat Mahomes the first. But that's another conversation. There's, there's not too many quarterbacks that are like him. So you got to go get a guy that you feel very comfortable can compete with him. Thanks for the text, my man. I definitely appreciate you. Uh, don't make that your last text either, man. I hope to hear from you again. Up next, got a call from Wine Country Raider. He's calling to talk about Michael Penix and what he believes the Raiders need to do in regards to him. Here he is, Wine Country Raider. What's up, Q? It's your boy, Wine Country Raider. Uh, just calling in, and uh, I'm thinking that we're going to have to take Penix at 13, unless we trade up or whatever. But I think that we're really going to have to take him at 13. I think there's way too many teams out here looking for quarterbacks. And, uh, yeah, he may not be a, a traditional, like, first-round graded player, but I just think that, that if Penix is our guy, we're going to have to just, bite down and take him in round one. Um, I heard uh, Kevin O'Connell talking on the Pat McAfee show, and, of course, that's just talk, you know, could be smoke screens, but a lot of people are talking about Penix and, you know, and these guys, and I just think that there's, if we want him, we're going to have to just, we're going to have to take him. If we want, I mean, even if it's not him, if it's any of these, these top, you know, whatever, five, six quarterbacks, I think they're all going to go in round one. Too many teams are just in that, in that, in the same boat as us. Um, love what you do, Q. First listen every day. Um, that's all I got, Raider Nation. Just win, baby. Thank you for the call, my man. Appreciate you. And you might be right. Taking them at 13 might be the move you have to take, right? I mean, I, I feel like you can wait, but that's just me having an educated guess, right? I will say a team to watch behind the Raiders are the Rams at 19, right? I mean, there's, there's, you, you can look at some teams and say, well, they don't need quarterbacks, they don't need quarterbacks. The Rams don't need a quarterback, but they can very easily go get a quarterback. Mike T actually uh, mocked the Michael Penix to the Rams at number 19. That's what I mentioned in segment number two when I said, oh, you, you mocked Penix there. Uh, and he even said later on, he's like, yeah, that's, that's the team to watch that doesn't need a quarterback that might go get one because Matt Stafford is unusually healthy. You know, the last season he was very healthy, but it doesn't mean he's not going to be you know, broken down or break down anytime soon. So they could very well be in, in line for a quarterback. So that's the team to watch out for. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those, you know, one of those things that the Raiders have to decide what they want to do. Either roll the dice, go get a dynamic player like I did in the locked on mock draft at 13 and, and let Michael Penix go and hope that, you know, he's around in, in round two or maybe even the back end of round one and you try to trade up and go get him. 
but there's no guarantee that that's going to happen. So thanks so much for the call. I do appreciate you. Got a text from LA Raider Steve. Said, what's happening, Q? A scenario we haven't heard is Aiden O'Connell being offered in the trade to move up in the draft. He's a rookie contract. Young and show promise. What are your thoughts on this? LA Raider Steve, Pico Rivera. Um, thanks for the text. I appreciate you. And Aiden O'Connell's not going anywhere, in my opinion. He's not. One, I don't think he's got a lot of trade value. And two, Antonio Pierce likes him a lot. And I, I don't think that you want to just have Gardner Minshew in the room and then a rookie, right? I mean, you, you want to have a guy that's been there, done that, show he could win some games like Aiden O'Connell. A guy that's going to compete for the starting job. I mean, AP's made it clear. A lot of us think that, you know, Gardner Minshew could easily start the season just because he's a veteran, been there, done that. But I also would not be shocked at all to see Aiden O'Connell start the season uh, before some rookie comes and takes, takes over if the rookie is that guy. And you know what? Maybe the rookie doesn't start at all. Uh, their rookie year. Maybe they don't start to season two. I can see Aiden O'Connell playing a big role with his Raiders team, and I don't, I don't see them trading him at all. And again, I don't think that there's a whole lot you can get for Aiden O'Connell at this stage of the game. Uh, he's won some games, no doubt, but he's only won some games. So thanks so much for the text. I appreciate you. I uh, got a call from Raider Big C in L.A. He's calling to talk about Tom Telesco and the way that he has located quarterbacks. Here he is, Raider Big C in L.A. Thank you. It's Raider Big C from L.A., I haven't called in a while. I wanted to chime in a couple of things, and I think a lot of people at Raider Nation are kind of forgetting. Um, I've been listening to all, you know, the YouTube shorts, everything that you post on Raider Nation Radio, everything. And I I'm starting to realize that people are forgetting, you know, our GM, Telesco, he has found some really good quarterbacks. Um, you know, you look at his track record. There's a reason why Davis brought him on board, I believe. And there's a reason why AP is there, of course. So what I'm getting at is this. Why don't we just let the man do his job? Now, pretty much when he was in the Chargers, he wasn't looking for a quarterback because he had Herbert, of course. So he, but he has an idea, at least, because this is such a heavy quarterback class. So he must have an idea of who it is. I know we want to get Jan Downs. Me too. I, I, I'm in the moment as well. But honestly, there's just too many teams in front of us that need a quarterback, and that was making it difficult to possibly trade up. If it wasn't because of all these teams needed quarterbacks, then it would have been a whole different conversation. So what I'm saying is let's just see where the chips fall this year. Um, AOC, yes, I want to upgrade, like you said. You know, you got to get a new car. Minshew is not really an upgrade, but at least he's giving us competition. Ultimately, let the Lesto do what he does best and find our future quarterback. And if the chips fall and we are able to get a trade up, great. But ultimately, let's just see what he can do because his track record is good at finding quarterbacks. And ultimately, AP, he's, he's a go-getter. Whoever he gets, like he said, when he comes to those gates of uh, the Raider HQ, they're going to know the Raider way. Raider Big C from L.A. out. Thank you for the call, my man. I appreciate you. And yeah, Telesco's been – good with quarterbacks he's been around quarterbacks right I mean from his time with the Bills time with the Colts obviously the Chargers Philip Rivers and Justin Herbert but he drafted Herbert the other guys you know part of the scouting team you know when he got to uh to the Chargers uh, Philip Rivers was there I believe so uh yeah I mean it, I don't want to say that all the quarterbacks he's been around like you know he helped scout for for Jim Kelly or was part of the the you know the the staff there when they weren't scouting for Jim Kelly part of the staff there with the Colts when you know they went and got Peyton Manning I mean it's not it's not like you know it's not like he went and hand selected all these guys and was like man I got to find this quarterback right and and Peyton Manning was you know a no brainer uh, Justin Herbert really kind of fell into their lap so I, I want to give him credit for that but it's not like I, I don't I don't want to say that it's it was the, like the hardest thing to do right it's not like he found some diamond in the rough in round four and it was fantastic. Right. And on top of that, uh, Raider Nation is going to talk about the quarterback position until it's solved. And, and that includes me. Right. Until it's all figured out. till the, you know, the hay is in the barn. Once the draft is over and we see what happens, who the Raiders ended up with, whether that's, you know, Jaden Daniels, Michael Penix, J.J. McCarthy, you know, Bo Nix, who, who is Spencer Rattler. Right. Uh, Jordan Travis, wh whoever it is, is until that's all said and done, we're going to talk about him. And, and depending on who it is, might still talk about him even after that. Thanks so much for the call. I appreciate you. We'll close things out with a text from Raider Golfer. It says, yo, Raider Golfer here. Just want to chime in on this draft talk. I know everyone loves, loves to talk about the quarterback situation, but I'd love to hear you rattle off a hypothetical draft that would be necessary and also boring as hell. <laughs> Let's pretend we don't sell the foreigner trade up. Instead, we just stick with Minshew or O'Connell and draft O-line, cornerback, or whatever else you think, Q. I know it's not flashy, but what do you think our draft would look like if we weren't able to trade up? And for the record, 
Am I the only one that thinks Michael Penix Jr. is overrated? I watched his combine. He was the slowest release ever. Plus, he stunk when it mattered most in the national championship game. Antonio Pierce said he wants winners, and Penix straight up choked. I think Aldeus would be looking harder at Joe Milton. Peace. That's from Raider Golfer. Thanks so much. And I'll start with the end with Michael Penix. I don't think he choked against Michigan. Michigan is the definition of bloodthirsty pirates. That defense was phenomenal, right? It would have taken an act of God for a lot of teams to be able to beat that team. They were phenomenal. I mean, the week before against Texas, uh, Michael Penix was amazing, right? So I, I, don't, I don't take a whole lot from Michigan. That defense was incredible. They got 18 guys that went to the combine from Michigan alone, right? They've got so many dudes that are going to be drafted. And I say dudes, not guys, dudes, because that's who they are. A lot of alphas on that defensive side of the ball. So I don't, I don't take that away from Michael Penix. Plus, he didn't have his run game, and he needs a strong run game, something that the Raiders have. If he doesn't have his run game out there, that could be a problem. Um, but I, and I think that I, I do think that he's a, a good quarterback. So with that being said, you're talking about a boring draft. Oh, uh, they could stay there at 13. They could do like I did, pick the best player available. In my opinion, uh, I went with, and you'll find out sooner rather than later. Uh, you know, you could go with a cornerback. You could go with the offensive lineman. You could go with you know multiple different directions. Defensive tackle, even though by uh, even though they they went and got Christian Wilkins, Byron Murphy is the guy that they could look at, right? I mean, you could still always add to that. You can get a linebacker. Uh, I mean, the defense, even though it's really good and we all believe it's going to be really solid this upcoming year, it could always be improved, right? I mean, you could still go get Byron Murphy and that would make, oh man, that defensive line really nasty. Go get a top flight cornerback. Uh, you need a top flight cornerback to go across from Jack Jones. A couple offensive linemen, like a guard and a tackle would be good, you know, to add to the mix. Uh, I, I could see them doing that just like solely working on the defense in the trenches and, and not worrying about what quarterback falls to them and, you know, trust that Minshew and O'Connell and, and maybe other like a Jordan Travis or a Spencer Rattler later on in the draft is a guy that they roll with. But, you know, and maybe even Joe Milton, like you said, uh, it, it very well easily could be that. And, and that could end up being the best approach. The good thing is Tom Telesco has been there, done that. Uh, he's a veteran when it comes to this, this uh, GM thing. Uh, he likes to focus in on the trenches, so that wouldn't be a big surprise to me. And a lot of times he lets the board come to him. So it could end up being one that we come back and say, boy, that was a boring draft, but it was an effective draft. It very well easily could be that. Raider Golfer, thanks so much for the text. I appreciate you. That's going to do it for today's show. Went overtime just a little bit, my man. All right. Now he'll be all right. He ain't worried about it. <laughs> but uh, that's going to do it for today's show. Uh, we'll come back on Friday. We'll close out the week really strong with more calls and texts. We'll have more news and notes. Find out what happens at Washington's Pro Day today, along with uh, North Carolina's as well. We'll have plenty of conversation here on the podcast, heading you into the weekend the right way. So until then, Raider Nation, take care of yourself. Take care of your family. Love on your family. Most importantly, as always, just win, baby.